From Roosevelt Base on Terminal Island, the Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Would you believe it? I've just discovered Homer Blunt is, well, he's a shirker. Now, don't misunderstand me. Homer doesn't shirk his work, not that guy. But do you know what that poor egg does? He shirks breakfast, takes it on the sip and run. Now, listen, Homer, it's mighty important for you to get a good breakfast every morning. Remember, you haven't had anything to eat for the last 10 or 12 hours. Why, nutrition experts say morning's the time we should get at least one quarter of our entire day's nourishment. And they also tell us the adequate breakfast should include a cereal with whole grain food values. Well, that's Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes for you. Two delicious cereals that are crammed full of whole grain nourishment. Iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. Yes, and what downright good eating Grape Nuts are. Crisp and crunchy. And Grape Nuts Flakes, tempting toasty brown flakes. Both with the same distinctive sweet as a nut flavor. Now, don't be a homer, friends. Eat a good breakfast, do a better job. And for a treat that can't be beat, feature Grape Nuts or Grape Nuts Flakes. gentlemen, we're all gathered here at the Navy's Small Craft Training Center at Roosevelt Base, Terminal Island. That is all except Jack and Mary, who are driving down. They should be here any minute, as they left just a little while after we did. Canada Standard, we should have been there an hour ago. Well, it's your own fault for not following instructions. Gee, I hope we get there in time. Yeah. You know, Jack, we've played lots of Army camps and Marine camps, but this is the first time we've been to a Navy base this year. That's right, isn't it? Well, I'm glad we're going to Terminal Island today because there's something I just love about a Navy base. Really? What is it? Sailors. <laughs> oh, Mary, when we're, an, when we're at an Army camp, you love soldiers. When we play for the Marines, you love Marines. Now we're going to a Navy base and you say you love sailors. What's the matter with you? Look, Jack, a uniform is a uniform as long as it isn't empty. <laughs> well, I can understand that, Mary. When I was in uniform in the last war, the girls were nuts about me, too. What babes? <laughs> that was 25 years ago. It's about time you gave them up. <laughs> yeah, gee, I hope we're on the right road. I better take another look at the directions they wrote down for us. Here it is. Follow Highway 101 to San Pedro. Turn to the right and put on your brakes. Is that what they wrote down, put on your brakes? Yeah, they said if I didn't, I'd hear an awful splash. <laughs> I wonder what that could be. Probably us. That's where we crossed the drawbridge. Oh, for goodness sake. Isn't there some other way we can get over to the island? I hate going across those things. Jack, it's a drawbridge, not a toll bridge. <laughs> Oh, oh, now let's see. I wonder where we are. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss. Rochester, do you have any idea where we are? Well, let me see. An hour ago, we were in Wilmington. Uh-huh. <laughs> Two hours ago, we were in Cucamonga. Uh-huh. Three hours ago, we were in Azusa. Well, where are we now? Three hours from Azusa. <laughs> oh, for a minute, I thought we were lost. Now, Rochester, while we're doing our show, put some gas and oil in the car and fill the tires with air. Oh, boss, not air from Terminal Island. The tide's out. <laughs> well, why not? Well, have you got a cold? Yes. Then I'll never be able to explain it to you. <laughs> What does he mean, Mary? Well, Jack, Terminal Island is where they have so many fish canneries. Oh. 
Well, why don't they do something about it? They do. It's the proving ground for gas masks. <laughs> Well, what do you know? Say, you better step on it, Rochester, or we'll be late. Okay. Say, Jack, we're almost there. That's right, there's the sign. What does it say? Four hours from Azusa. <laughs> does not, it says, this way to Terminal Island. What's the matter? Say, boss, this is a steep hill we're on. Well, you better put the car in second. <laughs> Gee, it is steep. We ain't gonna make it, boss. Well, give her a little more gas. Okay. Keep at it, Rochester. Hey, you, stop climbing up the drawbridge. <laughs> drawbridge? What'd you have to open it for? Is there a boat passing under? No, it's just a P-38 flying low. <laughs> oh, a wise guy, P-38. You expect me to believe such a silly... Watch out, here comes another one! <laughs> <laughs> Now, what were you saying, buddy? Nothing. Look, Mary, the bridge is closing. <laughs> okay, Rochester, let's go. Hey, Jack. What is it? Uh, would you like your windows washed? Of course not. Then you better wait for the other half of the bridge to come down. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> It's all right now, Rochester. Go ahead. Of all the silly things having a drawbridge there. And Rochester, uh -huh. drive straight along here till you reach the sentry gate with the big sign that says stop. Yes, boss. I wonder what happens if you don't stop. There ain't no one alive that can tell you. <laughs> well, you better start slowing down. There's the sentry. Oh. Who goes there? I'm Jack Benny. Don't antagonize him. <laughs> Mary. I hate to trouble you, Mr. Benny, but I'll have to see your pass before I can let you into the naval base. Oh, yes, yes, sure. See, Mary, no matter how important you are, you've got to have a pass. Now, let's see. Where did I put it? Uh, maybe it's in your wallet. No. In your change purse? No, I didn't put it there. In your money belt? <laughs> no, I didn't put it there either. Under your toupee? No. Oh, stop. <laughs> Say, I think I left my pass in my other suit. Your other suit, boss? Yes, in the inside coat pocket. Well, sure enough. Here it is. <laughs> Rochester, I thought that suit looked familiar. I told you not to wear any of my suits until they get a little shiny. A little shiny? Boss, you wear them till there's a searchlight in the stern. <laughs> Never mind. Here you are, sailor. Thank you. Uh, do I need a pass, too? No, miss. As long as your father has one, it's all right. <laughs> I'm not her father. Drive on, Rochester. There's the auditorium where we're doing the broadcast. Geez, a shame we're so late. Mary, turn on the radio and let's hear what the gang's doing. Okay. And here's another one for you, fellas. This is a Lulu. Don, ask me why a sailor sleeps in a hammock. Okay, Phil, why does a sailor sleep in a hammock? Because he'd look silly laying there without anything holding him up. <laughs> oh, Philip, you buffoon, you. Imagine oh. a guy getting laughs with that kind of stuff. Drive faster, Rochester, before it's too late. Okay, boy. We'll ruin the show. <laughs> And mine got together and designed a wonderful girl for me. Oh, what a fantasy! Though the idol of my heart can't be ordered a la carte, I wonder if she will be. Always a fantasy Will I ever find a girl in my mind The one who is my ideal Maybe she's a dream 
dream And yet she might be Just around the corner Waiting for me Will I recognize a light in faith and so I'll wait for my Good, Dennis. Very good. That was my ideal song by Dennis Day. And now, fellas... Okay, Don, I'll take over. <clears throat> you know, fellas, as I was coming down here today, That's I... That's enough, uh... Phil. That's enough. You can sack up your corn now. I'm here. <laughs> what are you talking about, Jackson? I got the audience warmed up for you. I told some gags that had them rolling in the aisles. Phil, while I was driving down here, I tuned in the program and heard one of your gags. You did, Jackson? Yes, and it's the first time a radio ever changed stations by itself. <laughs> you ought to cut that stuff out. Oh, what's the matter with you anyway? I pulled a gag and it got a big laugh, didn't it? Well, pull up your pants. The laugh is over. <laughs> You know, Phil, I don't mind a guy getting laughed by dropping his pants. But when you've got Abbott and Costello tattooed on your knees, that's going too far. <laughs> Not even Abbott and Costello do that. <laughs> they don't? No. Now, let's get on with the... Say, Mr. Benny, if you don't like Mr. Harris's joke, I've got a good riddle. Never mind. What is it that barks and has feathers? Barks and has feathers? <laughs> All right, what is it? A dog. Where do the feathers come in? It's a bird dog. <laughs> well, I'll be... <laughs> oh, Dennis, you huss and pfeffer, you. <laughs> Look, kid, will you stop with that huss and pfeffer? I had enough of it last week. What got into you? Well, I'm going to change my name from Dennis Day to Dennis Huss and Pfeffer. Uh, legally? Gee, that sounds nice. What? Dennis Legally Hassenpfeffer. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Dennis, why do you want to change your name to Hassenpfeffer? Day is such a simple name and so easy to remember, like Benny. Yeah, but that's going too far. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Benny Dennis Legally Hassenpfeffer. <laughs> Look, kid. Junior. <laughs> Now, look, Dennis, I just got here, and I want to talk to the sailors, so go over in the corner and sit down. Okay. Come on, pal. Dennis, who are you talking to? Legally. <laughs> well, anyway, fellas, I don't know how many of you know this, but I was a sailor in the last war, and I was at Great Lakes. That's about six miles from my hometown, Waukegan. And I'll never oh, say, forget... Jack, Jack, do you mind if I interrupt you for just a moment? No, Don, what is it? Well, there's a friend of mine stationed here, and he'd like to say a few words. Oh, well, let him talk. Any friend of yours is a friend of our sponsors. Uh, let's hear from him. All right. Oh, sailor, would you mind telling us what your favorite breakfast food is? <laughs> I know all that, but why do you like grape nuts and grape nuts flakes? Don, did he say grape nuts and grape nuts flakes? <laughs> yes, Jack. I could have sworn he only said grape nuts. Eh? <laughs> oh, well. No, no, he said them both. Really? Now tell me, sailor, why do you like grape nuts and grape nuts flakes? <laughs> hmm. Well, you're right. They are crunchy and have that moldy rich flavor. <laughs> And they're delicious with sugar and cream. And tell me, sailor, 
Uh, what else do you like about them? <laughs> oh, you're right. Everybody knows they're Toasty Brown. <laughs> if that sounded like Toasty Brown, I'll eat my hat. Uh. Don, what kind of a... Yeah, yeah, with sugar and cream. <laughs> Don, what kind of a... Thanks a lot, sailor. Goodbye. Hmm. Don, how come your friend talks so fast? Well, Jackie's only got a three-hour pass, and he doesn't want to waste it around here. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, he, uh... He appeared to be an awfully nice fellow from what I saw of him. Now, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, you know, fellas, when I was in the Navy in the last war, I was stationed at Great Lakes. And I'll never forget when I enlisted. What a day. Oh, I changed that to Hassenpfeffer. <laughs> Listen, kid, I'm trying to tell the boys about the last war when I was a sailor. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? I bet you were a jolly tar. Well. <laughs> You a sailor. <laughs> now, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Remember last night when you put sugar in your coffee? So what? It made a wave and you got seasick. <laughs> Mary, did you make up that little joke all by yourself? Huh? No, one of your writers gave it to me. Well, if you just tell me which one, you'll save me a lot of money. <laughs> Now, fellas, as I was saying, when I enlisted in the Say, Navy... Say, Jackson, nobody's interested in what happened to you in the last war. They want to be entertained. Let Mary and me do a song. A song? Sure, you don't think the sailors just want to look at me. Well, did you and Phil rehearse a song? No, we're going to do it incognito. Oh, brother. Well, go ahead. Let me hear it. Come on, hit it, boy. <laughs> You gotta talk me into it, talk me into it, baby A little conversation might change my no to a maybe Well, I'll spread it on thick like butter on bread And I'll get results if I use my head Well, I'm a baby lamb, I love to be led by you You gotta, baby, talk me to talk me into it, baby well, if it's Mendelssohn you hear, would you lend an ear? Well, I don't know, maybe, but I'm a cinch for a clinch. A place for a phrase of love words. Now that I've told you how... Well, I will, I will spread out. I got some jive that won't quit here. Listen, I'm going to talk you into it, talk you into it, baby. Well, if it's Mendelssohn I hear, I might lend an ear, maybe. Yes, you're a cinch for a clinch, a blaze for a phrase of love words. Now that I've told you how, won't, won't you, you marry, marry me, me now? now? <laughs> it's all right, doll. <laughs> All right, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> that was You Gotta Talk Me Into It, Baby, sung by Dinah Livingston <laughs> and Phil Sinatra. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, what, was I, uh, what was I talking about before your song? Uh, what you're always talking about, Jack Benny. Oh, yes, yes. When I was in the Navy. Well, it's a long story. I'm not going to bother about it now. No, no, go ahead, Jackson. Tell them these sailors can take anything. <laughs> No, 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 no. They don't want to hear about it. Okay, let's forget the whole thing. Mary, that isn't patriotic. <laughs> it was 1917. <laughs> Our country was at war, and something, something kept pulling me to join the Navy. <laughs> it was two o'clock in the afternoon when I entered the recruiting office. I was eager, anxious, enthusiastic about my new adventure. Here he is, Chief. Okay, you can untie him now. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I was coming here to join the Navy anyway. Now, we'll stick to the business at hand, young fella. First of all, your name. Jackie Benny. <laughs> your age. 16. 16? Yeah. And how come you need a shave? If you didn't shave for 16 years, you'd need one, too. <laughs> Wouldn't you? 
Never mind. Take this application and go into the next room for your physical examination. Thank you, sir. Just imagine me, little Jackie Benny, about to join the Navy. Hello, doctor. Hello. <laughs> uh, doctor, the recruiting officer, told me to come in here for my physical. Okay. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Ah. My, my, what a place for an airfield. <laughs> An airfield? Why, that's the silliest thing. <laughs> hmm. What were you going to say, buddy? Nothing. <laughs> now I'll take this needle and give you a blood test. A blood test? Yes, yes. sir. Roll up your sleeve. Like this? That's right. Now hold still. Steady. Will it hurt, doctor? <laughs> of course not. Good. Did you get any blood out of me? Yes, congratulations. <laughs> uh, thank you. And now I think I'll listen to your... Dr. Ferguson, Dr. Ferguson, call your wife immediately. Okay. Now, young man... Uh, but, Dr. Ferguson, they wanted you to call your wife immediately. Oh, I always do. That's her name. Immediately Ferguson. <laughs> what a name. Immediately Ferguson. My name is Hassan Pfeffer. <laughs> Dennis, get out of here. This is 25 years ago. I'm playing the part of my father. <laughs> oh. Boy, am I going to have a son that's a Lulu. <laughs> now, doctor... Lulu Hassan Pfeffer. <laughs> Now, now, doctor... Now, just a moment. Now, lie down on this rug and face the floor. Like this? That's right. Now, inhale. There. Now, inhale again. Once more. That's enough, and thank you. Say, Doc, what was the idea? I haven't had this place vacuumed all week. <laughs> Look, Doc... Do I get in the Navy or don't I? Well, son, I'm sorry, but I'll have to report some bad news. For me? No, for the Navy you're in. <laughs> well, what do you know? All right, boys, all right. All you new recruits, line up for your uniforms. Uh, I take a size 34, please. Well... <laughs> Really? Yes, uh, 34 ways. Uh-huh. Uh, 29 pants legs. Yes. And 32 sleeve length on the coat. Well, I'm glad you told me. Yes. Any particular color? Well, <laughs> would you happen to have something in blue? Blue? <laughs> well, buddy, you certainly are in luck. I am? Yeah, it just happens that I've got three million left. <laughs> Gee, I am lucky. Yeah. Next. But, officer... Keep moving, keep moving. Where do I put on my uniform? Right here, as you're walking along. <laughs> as I'm walking along, but my old clothes. Oh, just drop them. We have chambermaids who'll come along and pick them up. <laughs> oh. Come on, come on. Change your clothes, all of you. Oh, officer, I've almost got my uniform on. Good. Uh, would you mind buttoning me up? That goes in front. <laughs> Either take them off and change them or turn around and keep moving. Uh, yes, sir. And go over to that desk where it says assignment officer. Yes, sir. Gee, I'm a regular sailor now. Okay, buddy, stop mumbling to yourself and step up to the desk. Me? Yes, you. It's my job to find out what you're best suited for. Now tell me, what just did you do in civilian life? I was a violinist. Oh. Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I don't think they'll be able to hear you during the heat of battle. <laughs> oh, I think they will. Uh, I play without a mute. <laughs> I see. Now tell me, young man, what part of the service would you like? Well, I'd kind of like to be a submarine. I mean, I'd like to be in a, I'd like to be in a submarine. That's fine. But of course, you know that being in a submarine sometimes gives you the bends. 
Benz and these pants, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> Anything else, sir? Nothing except to give you my congratulations. You're now a member of the United States Navy, one of the greatest fighting forces in the world. And now that you're a part of it, it's your duty to uphold its traditions and its honor. Yes, sir. Now, in starting your naval career, you will be stationed at Great Lakes, Illinois. Great Lakes? Gee. Now, let me give you a tip. If while you're there, you work hard and do a good job, who knows but that someday you'll be sent to Terminal Island. <laughs> And yippee! Gee, I wonder where that is. Four hours from Azusa. <laughs> oh, yes. Play, Phil. What makes anybody enjoy a meal? Why, flavor, of course. And what makes Grape Nuts Flakes America's fastest growing breakfast cereal? Flavor, malty rich, sweet as a nut flavor that's outstanding. Say, Mr. Wilson, could I ask you something? Okay, Dennis, I guess so. Well, I tried some Grape Nuts Flakes this morning and I had a little trouble. Oh, now, Dennis, that couldn't be. Why, those delicious toasty brown flakes are the most tempting breakfast treat you could ask for. Because Grape Nuts Flakes are a rich two grain blend and they have a flavor that's tops. That's what I thought I heard you say, and that's why I tried them, but I had a little trouble with Nonsense! I... Grape Nuts Flakes have a luscious flavor and a crispy texture. Yes, the texture I had a little trouble with. Now, Dennis, that's absurd. So, friends, ask your grocer for that big economy-sized package of Grape Nuts Flakes. Take it home, open it up. Open it? Did you say you open it? Why, certainly, Dennis. Open the package, pour out a helping, and uh, go to it. Oh, well, I guess that's where I had my trouble. I didn't open the package. You didn't open it? <laughs> Oh, so long, Dennis. Friends, ask your grocer for Grape Nuts Flakes tomorrow. I want to thank all the men here at the Small Craft Training Center, Roosevelt Base, for a grand reception today. It was a lot of fun being back in the Navy again. Next Sunday, we'll be coming to you at the same time from the Army Air Base at Marchfield, California. Say, Jack, I want to ask you something. What is it, Mary? Were you only 16 when you joined the Navy? Yes, Mary, that was about 25 years ago. But that would make you 41 now. Yeah, how'd I get that extra year added on? <laughs> I must have been 15 when I joined, I think. Well, anyway, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to be serious for just a moment. It's the, it's the boy up the block who's fighting this war for us. It's the freckle-faced kid who used to deliver the groceries. It's the youngster fresh out of the local high school. It's your neighbor's son. Perhaps it's your own. Yes, the kids who used to play cops and robbers are playing for higher stakes now. They're fighting a war for freedom, and they're fighting it for us. So if you've been thinking that you can't afford an extra $100 bond during this fourth war loan drive, stop and think again. As you sit quietly at home listening to the radio, think of the boys who will never come back home. Then make up your mind to buy that extra war bond. Too many people, it will mean a sacrifice. Every one of us is asked to buy at least one extra $100 bond. Now, how can anybody say no? It's our war. It's our boys fighting it. So buy that extra bond and don't wait, because war doesn't. For a value that's super, a treat that is real, get the giant new package of Grape Nuts Wheat Meal. Yes, lady, that's 30 full ounces, you bet, of the rich hot brown cereal, the best eating yet. It's more for your money, it's more for your dough. Get hot grape nuts wheat meal, you'll thank me, I know. You bet 30 full ounces of the best hot brown cereal yet with fresh roasted wheat flavor, full-bodied texture, real whole wheat nourishment. That's the money-saving big new economy size package of grape nuts wheat meal. This broadcast from Roosevelt Base does not constitute an endorsement of our products by the Navy Department. This is the National Broadcasting Company.